and I welcome you into my home. I'm also very delighted to welcome Jay and uh, I'm the proud owner of this ionizer from your company and uh, I'm really excited to learn how to hook it up, how to make it work and to use it very fast. I congratulate you too to the value you have in life to bring good water into your life to your friends and family. So, are you ready to show me how it works? Sure, Katera. Thank you. And I want to thank you at home for taking your time to watch this short video where I'll show you how to install and correctly use your Jupiter ionizer. You'll also learn how to optimize the use of your ionizer and perform the routine maintenance. For your convenience, this video has been organized into three index chapters so that in the future, if you want to watch just one specific section, you don't have to watch the whole video, you can just go to that section. So the three sections we'll go over today are installation, how to work the pH of your machine and get the most out of it, and then the routine maintenance uh, that you'll have to perform on the machine. And please, I want you to watch the whole video and refer to the manual if you have questions in the future. So are you ready to unpack the box, Katera? I am. Well, let's do that. Go ahead and open it up. And what you'll notice when you open it is two styrofoam pieces that cradle the machine on either side. And there will be a bag with the diverter and a couple of adapter pieces in it. And we'll set that aside. And on Katira's side, there's a little bottle with some reagent drops, and I'll explain that later. So it's probably easiest if you have a friend help you and pull the machine out on a nice flat surface. like that. And we'll take the stainless steel flexible drinking water spout and set that aside. And why don't you go ahead and take the styrofoam off, Katira. Okay. And go ahead and, and, and plastic unwrap right? the plastic. Now, it may smell rather strong when you first take it out of the plastic bag, but that's normal and that smell will go away after a short while. And here's something more. These are your hoses that we'll show you how to hook up later in the video. Well, I can hardly wait to see how that functions. Are you ready to get it hooked up? Yeah. Let's take a look at the front of the microlight first. When you first look at the face, you'll notice there's nothing too complex here, which is in fact what makes the microlight so easy to use. First up here you have the filter life indicator and there's also a, a protective film that comes on the control panel to protect it during shipping. Let's go ahead and peel up a corner of that and peel it right off. Let's take a look at the control panel. At the top you have the filter life indicator. Below that you have your pH indicator lights which will show what, what type of water you have selected and what level of water is selected. And below that you have your function control buttons which you'll use to operate the machine. Looking at the top there's a port where we'll remove the black plug and install the flexible stainless steel drinking water spout. Let's take a minute and do that right now. It's threaded so you just insert it and screw it in making sure it's nice and tight, give it a firm twist and then let's bend that to get it out of the way. Also this is the filter door which we'll go over when we show you how to replace the filter. Moving to the back of the machine at the top you have two keyhole slots where you can use these to mount your microlight on the wall if you choose. Here we've got the fuse holder and your microlight came with an extra fuse. That was included in the diverter bag. This is the on off switch where we'll power the microlight up after we've installed it. 
And now moving to the bottom of the machine, you'll see there are two stickers identifying the two ports where we'll attach the hoses to operate the machine. The first one is the acid water outlet port where you're, where you're going to attach the gray quarter inch acid outlet tube. And the other one with the blue sticker is the tap water inlet port where you'll attach the quarter inch white hose that it will come off the diverter from your faucet. And finally, we have the plug that we'll use to power the machine up. Notice it's a three-prong type plug that you'll want to plug into a, an appropriate three-pronged outlet. And if you have one, a GFI outlet, which are usually close to the sink. We'll begin by placing the machine down on its back and you'll notice I've put a towel down to protect the casing. Your machine will come with two hoses, two different colors, gray for the acid water ho uh, output and white for the alkaline drinking water. Let's start with the white. We'll begin the process by removing the black rubber protective cap on the tap water inlet port and then by placing one of the two clamps that comes in the diverter bag over the end of the white tap water inlet hose and then simply push the white hose onto the fitting. Quite often it'll be very difficult to get the end of the white hose onto the tap water inlet port in which case it's very helpful to soak about the first inch of the white hose in some hot water for about 30 seconds. And that way the, the, the white hose should slip onto that fitting very easily and you'll be able to push it all the way on and seat the hose onto the port properly. Always make sure you brace the white fitting with a finger and then we'll finish by moving the clamp up over the in-water tap and then we'll begin with the acid water outlet by removing the black protective cap, putting our clamp over the end soaking the first inch of the water. After you give it a good soak for about 30 seconds, get a firm hold of the acid water outlet port with one hand and slide the hose over with the other. It should go on fairly easy after soaking. And then finish by working the clamp using a pair of pliers if you need to over the, the fitting and the hose. And it's that simple. Now let's take it to the tap and install it to the, fa the faucet. So now that we're at the sink, the first thing that we'll actually do is install the diverter onto the tap. To do this, you'll need the diverter bag, which came with the unit and looks like this. Let's take a look at what's inside the bag. First you have the diverter, and then a couple of adapter pieces to use on the end of the faucet if the diverter doesn't actually fit onto the end of your faucet. These diverters actually handle virtually all of the possible configurations, but if you find you have a specialized faucet or it doesn't fit for some reason, just go to your local hardware store to get the correct adapter. The bag also has a couple of nails in it, which you'll use if you prefer to do a wall mount, but most likely you won't need those nails. Now we'll remove the aerator from the end of the faucet. Most of the time you can do this just by using your fingers, but if it's really tight, you can use a pair of pliers to loosen it up, and then you can simply unthread it the rest of the way with your fingers. Then we'll take the diverter and actually try to screw it on to the end of the faucet, and in this case you'll see it's not going to work. So we'll take our adapter pieces, decide which one's the right size, screw that in by hand, 
Again, you don't want to over tighten this or use the pliers. You'll damage the threads on the end of the adapter. So you get it nice and tight, but finger tight's good enough. And then the diverter screws on to the end of the adapter. After you get the installation complete and you run water through the machine, if you find that you have leaks, you can always go back, take the diverter off, put a couple of wraps of white Teflon plumber's tape, which you can get at any good hardware, and that should take care of the problem. And that's it for the diverter. Now that you have the diverter installed, you'll want to locate a good spot for your ionizer. You'll want to find a spot that's convenient, that's close enough to the sink, yet out of the way. On this sink, that's on the left side. Once the machine is located properly, you'll want to cut your hoses to the proper length. The white hose should be left long enough so that you'll have enough slack in the line to be able to access the back of the ionizer by turning it around. You'll notice the diverter swivels. So let's turn the diverter so the compression nut is facing us and remove the compression nut. The compression nut then goes on the outside on the white hose. The white hose goes onto the nipple of the diverter and then we reattach the compression nut. This might be kind of tight as we're applying some pressure so you can simply use a pair of pliers to finish up the job. And then position your hose back around and out of the way. As you'll notice, the gray hose simply needs to lay in the sink and you can choose whatever length you want that's convenient for you so that you can capture the acid water for its many great uses. So let's plug it in and power it up. Remember there's a three-prong plug and you'll want to put that into a three-prong outlet, ideally a GFI outlet, like you see here in the wall. Once it's plugged in, we'll simply turn on the on-off power switch by flipping the switch up. Okay, let's learn how to use the machine now. The first thing we'll want to do is turn the water on at the tap to a nice easy flow so that the water is coming out of the faucet. We'll open the diverter level and you'll notice the water now coming out of the spout, the drinking water spout, and the acid hose. To control the water flow, you simply turn the lever to switch it back and forth from the tap to the machine and the spouts. Okay, let's wake the machine up by flipping the diverter to the on position. The first thing you'll notice is that a tune plays, which we can hear now. This indicates by lighting up the yellow light that we're in self-cleaning mode. When you're self-cleaning, you'll have acid water coming out of your drinking water spout. Don't drink that. The cleaning cycle takes about 10 to 20 seconds. The tune will play the whole time and you only need to do that once a day. When it's completed, the tune will stop playing and the light will move to the purple bar, which it's done now. To change the alkaline level, you simply need to depress the purple alkaline button to cycle the lights through the different pH levels. Now the cleaning cycle only has to go once a day, so when we come back to turn the machine on, the tune will start to play, and to bypass the cleaning cycle, we simply hit the alkaline button and select the level that we want to collect our drinking water. Each time you operate the machine, you'll notice the filter life indicator light up. When your machine is new, you'll have one bar lit. When all the bars are lit up, it indicates that the filter life is almost over and you need to reorder a new filter and replace it within four weeks. When the machine is new and you first start to use it, the water that comes out of the drinking water spout will be dark colored from carbon dust. This is absolutely normal with any carbon filtration product. Let the machine run for about two minutes or until your water returns to a nice clear color. Then it's totally safe to drink. 
Well, that's it. It was much easier than what I thought. And here we are, prosting to you at home. And uh, prost to you for thank you for coming to my home and installing that machine and to your health. Here's the clean and healthy water. Something. Well, Jake, that really fascinates me. I really want to know how to use those little propers and uh, get the best out of my water. Will you show that to me? Great question, Katira. The reagent kit is actually used to calibrate and get the most out of the machine. Let me show you how this happens. Okay, let's have some fun. Let's learn how to test the pH with the reagent kit. Let's start by opening the bag and seeing what's inside. First you'll notice you have the bottle of reagent drops. Then you've got a little vial to test the water in. You've got a fuse. We provide an extra fuse. You want to put that somewhere safe where you'll be able to find it in the event you need to replace your fuse. And finally, we have the pH color chart. Now I want to note that the colors aren't, you're never going to really hit the colors exactly. This is an approximation of the colors on the pH scale. So let's begin by looking at the different colors, starting on the acidic side with this test tube, which would represent about a 4. That's a pretty acidic water, and you'd use that for external purposes, like washing your face or rinsing conditioner out of your hair or many other uses. Moving up the scale to a slightly acidic 6, which would be represented in this test tube, and then up to a neutral of 7 on the pH scale, which is this green test tube here. Most tap water is going to fall somewhere in this range, from the slightly acidic to maybe even the slightly alkaline. Moving up to the alkaline side, to an 8, we see that in a nice blue test tube here, and that's where you'll want to start drinking the water. Let your body adjust slowly to the alkalinity. It may take a few days to a week. If you start at too high a pH level, you may experience mild detoxification symptoms, which actually shows that the machine in the water is doing its job as your body is flushing toxins. When you feel comfortable, you might, you'll want to move from the blue color where you start to a light purple to try a higher level of alkalinity. Most people find that they're comfortable drinking the water between 8.5 and 9.5 on the pH scale. Although the machine is capable of producing higher levels of pH, upwards of 10 and higher, it, there's no reason to believe that the higher level is better for you. As a matter of fact, most people find that when they hit those higher levels of pH, the water actually tastes bad. Okay, so let's test for alkalinity. You'll notice the machine is processing water at a nice easy flow rate out of the drinking water spout and that we have the control panel set to the purple alkaline bar at the medium pH setting, which should give us a nice blue to violet color. So we'll fill up our vial about two-thirds to three-quarters of the way full, put a couple of reagent drops in it, put our thumb over it, shake it up, and you've got a nice violet color, which is what it should be. Now you can change that color by changing the alkalinity button, which I'll do right now, to the high, and we'll fill up our vial again, test that, and it should be a darker purple. Which you see here. Now I want to show you how you can fine tune the machine using your faucet by controlling the rate at which the water processes through the machine. The faster the water processes through the machine, the less ionization and the, the lower level of alkalinity you'll receive. Let me demonstrate. So now we have a nice easy flow rate coming out. If I speed that flow rate up by opening my faucet all the way so the water's coming through quite rapidly and fill my test vial up again, I'm going to get a different color. I'll add my two reagent drops or three, whatever it takes to turn it the color give it a little shake, and now I've got a nice kind of blue-green, more to the blue side, which is where you probably want to start drinking the water. Now conversely, if I use the faucet to slow the flow down so that the water is barely trickling through the machine and test again, 
I'm probably going to get something in the dark purple range. Add the two drops of the reagent, or three, whatever it takes to turn it the color. Shake it up, and now you've got a nice dark purple. So I did that without changing any alkalinity settings, but by simply using the flow control of the faucet to control how fast the water processes through the machine. It's quite simple, and you can use that in conjunction with the alkalinity buttons or the acidic button if you're trying to achieve a very specific level of alkalinity. I love that water so much. Now how I'm going to travel with it or store it, any suggestion? So there's no real magic in storing the water. There's just a couple of things you'll want to think about. You'll definitely want to avoid metal or stainless steel containers and the number one PET containers like you'd buy bottled water in in a convenience store. You can tell that it's a number one PET bottle because there will be a number one inside of a triangle on the bottom of the bottle. Avoid these. The acceptable containers are shown here. This is a Lexan container which comes with a nice convenient carrying handle. You can purchase these in good health food stores. It's a hard plastic, much harder than the number one PET. Generally says Lexan on it and on the bottom we'll have a number seven inside the triangle. But best is glass. And this is just simply a one quart juice uh, container from any store. And the best way to store the water is to fill it all the way to the top with no air contact, tightly closed and then cooled in the refrigerator. If that's not possible, it's okay because the healthful values will last for quite a while. Ideally, the water will keep for about two days if it's filled this way in a glass container all the way to the top and kept in the refrigerator. But absolutely, the best way to drink the water is fresh out of the machine in a glass and just straight down. I just wanted to take a minute to summarize a few key points about optimizing and getting the most out of your ionizer. First, learn to use and master testing the water with the reagent kit. Test your tap water and then test the various setting levels on the machine because they'll all be different. Everybody's tap water is different around the country. Some areas are acidic, some areas are quite alkaline and that will impact the level of alkalinity that you're able to achieve with the machine. So learn to use and master the reagent test kit. Next, you want to always remember in conjunction with the alkalinity button on the machine to remember that the flow rate through the machine helps control the alkalinity as well. The faster the machine processes the water, the lower the alkalinity. The slower the machine processes the water, the higher the alkalinity. So play with the buttons in conjunction with your flow rate to achieve the optimum levels, again remembering to test. And finally, you'll want to start with the low pH and slowly, gradually ramp up to a higher. And then you'll settle somewhere in the alkaline range between blue and purple, and it's very different for everybody. Just remember to listen to the wisdom of your body. It'll tell you what it likes. So, Che, when do I know when to replace the filter? That's easy, Katera. Let me show you how. Each time you operate the machine, you'll notice the filter life indicator light up. When your machine is new, you'll have one bar lit. When all the bars are lit up, it indicates that the filter life is almost over and you need to reorder a new filter and replace it within four weeks. When the machine is new and you first start to use it, the water that comes out of the drinking water spout will be dark colored from carbon dust. This is absolutely normal with any carbon filtration product. Let the machine run for about two minutes or until your water returns to a nice clear color. Then it's totally safe to drink. Here I'm tracing the outline of the filter housing door, inside of which you'll find the Biostone filter. On the side of the machine, there are four plastic raised ridges. And this is where you'll depress. Sometimes you have to push firmly and then just swing it out and the door comes completely off. 
Looking at the front of the machine, you'll see the BioStone filter and that it's sitting in a cup. Taking your fingers, placing them on the top of the filter, press down firmly. It's a spring-loaded mechanism and pull out when the mechanism clears the nipple at the top and remove the filter. Generally, the filter cup will come out with the filter. We'll remove this and save this as you'll want to put that on the bottom of the new filter. So this is your replacement filter. Let's take it out of the box and out of the plastic bag and remove the plastic caps on either end. So we'll start by, to install the new filter by attaching the filter cup at the base, making sure that the writing is right side up on the filter. Attach that firmly and fit the nipple into the fitting at the base of the filter housing. And remember, it's spring-loaded, so you've got to give it a good push and then reinsert the fitting at the top into the machine, and you'll notice It'll work its way up slowly as that spring starts to release. Make sure you've got a good tight fitting by working the filter back and forth. Next we'll put the door back on by aligning the prongs into the slots, pushing our four ridges until it clicks, and it's that simple. Next you'll want to reset your filter life indicator here on the control panel. To do that, turn the water on so that the machine is running water through it, and then simply when the music comes on to play, indicating that it's cleaning, press the purified and the acidic buttons together and hold them down simultaneously for 10 seconds or until the music stops playing. And that should reset your filter indicator light down to the lowest level. And Jay, what do I do if I need to replace the fuse? Well, that's simple too, Katira. As a matter of fact, the little plastic bag with the reagent kit came with an extra fuse. Let me show you how to do that. Great. To replace the fuse, we'll begin by unplugging your power from your power source and turning the machine off on the back on the on-off power switch and then unscrew the, the fuse housing to access the old fuse. Gently remove it, replace the new fuse, and re-thread it. Tightening it down nice and firm, but not over-tightening it. You can then plug your machine back in and power it back up and resume drinking your ionized water. If you have any further questions on the use of your Jupiter ionizer or troubleshooting questions or its two-year warranty, please refer back to the, any section of this video or the really wonderful detailed manual. Okay. Well, that concludes this. And thank you for being guest in my home. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and will give you lots of information how to make best use and how to take care of this beautiful purchase you made. Thank you.